Disney villains. They can be fun. They can be tragic. But a lot of times they do wind up dying. A lot of times off screen and <clears throat> sometimes in like sort of kind of horrifying ways. I know that a lot of people look at like Gaston. A lot of people look at... Uh, for me, the one that that sent shivers down my spine when I was a kid was Clayton from Tarzan. Because mm. him getting... Yeah, he was scary. Him getting strung up from the vine and seeing his shadow dangling when the lightning hit in the background and you saw like the shadow on the yeah. jungle behind Tarzan. I was like, ooh. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh. Apparently as a kid, I was kind of spooked by Coella DeVille and Horace and Jasper. Well, they not, well they didn't die, but their but their like crash definitely was was scary, especially with Cruella's like glowing yellow eyes with like the spirals in it. Mm -hmm. Like sheesh, definitely sent a chill down my spine. I would also say Ursula was a very brutal one from like the little the animated Little Mermaid. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She might have been the beginning of most people's fear of the ocean. <laughs> Probably. Oh gosh. Is that why you fear the ocean? <laughs> no, it's the sharks. Nah, he it's hates it because of the great white shark. Jaws fuck him up. Is that really why? It wasn't just Jaws, it was a bunch of other ones as well. Oh really? Some of the real life things that have happened. There's a particular video I always showed everybody. I was like, this is why I don't fucking trust them and I'm terrified of them. <laughs> it's because there's a basically a, a couple of experts standing in waist deep water and they have a bull shark swimming around them. That's your problem right and there. And they're just like, so this is really cool. You know, you see they come up and they keep, and I think they're Australians, like they keep, well, I can't do a good Australian accent, but they keep checking us out and everything. But you know, as long as we remain perfectly still, everything's fine. Ow. And then all of a sudden one comes up to his leg and goes, and just fucking, a like beat. a fucking chicken leg, like just all of his calf muscles. Mm. And they're carrying him out and you can see like, the dangly like bits of flesh that are left on the bone here but nothing's there mm. and I was just like uh, fuck that well you see that's why if I ever do go and shark if, if there's ever a reason say okay for me if I am in a place that has a treasure that is guaranteed to give me generational wealth for the rest of my life and, the, and my family as well and it's at the bottom of this little like like crevasse that's like a thousand that's like a thousand feet deep. But down there are a bunch of sharks. I am not going down there unless I have that super gel protective gear all over me. I don't and, even know if that would help me because I'd still probably have a heart attack and die. Well, no, just from and, but, but you see, that's you, Nick. <laughs> you you wouldn't have to, but me. I would willingly do it because, for me, if the opportunity is there, this is a very big hypothetical. This isn't something that's realistic. It's a massive hypothetical. But if it did happen and I was down there and, and down there was, like, my future and everything, I would go for it. But I would want as much protection as possible. I'm not swimming down there like Matthew McConaughey in Gold Rush, just, like, in in board shorts like an idiot board shorts and goggles although it wasn't a thousand feet I think it was like just maybe like a hundred feet or so that he swam down but still oh anyway yeah so Disney has had some uh, funny villains and the nostalgia critic aka Dougie Boy has decided that he is going to uh, highlight some of them for us in fact he does a top 11. Why top 11? Ah, he'll explain that. Your, well, the number one um, funniest outfit, Disney villain. <clears throat> huh? Where's your, um, you know, your little... Oh. We'll worry about that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see how, how, how I go with that. But what were you saying, Nick? The number one funniest Disney villain is obviously Kyle Ren. <laughs> oh, yeah. A real, a real <laughs> well of comedy on that one. <laughs> Especially on his SNL appearance. Yeah. He, he's just like... Heard Kylo Ren shed it that he has like an A-pack. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <coughs> you haven't seen that? No. It's fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, Adam Driver did an appearance on SNL, and he basically did like undercover boss as Kylo Ren. Oh. So he walked in dressed up like as a stormtrooper or whatever, and he's talking to the other stupid stormtroopers, and he's like, "Yeah, so I heard Kylo Ren shredded that he has like an eight pack, <laughs> 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 shit like that." Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's one of the funnier bits on SNL over the last ten years. So we have ten. Or we have. 11 of the funniest Disney villains. Let's see which ones Doug has included. Do you have any funny Disney villains that you think about or you would include on this? Iago. Iago is funny because yeah, of uh, Gilbert like Godfrey. Yeah. I would also say... And uh, the hyenas. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would also say Kronk. Yeah, Kronk, yeah. definitely. Kronk, Kronk and Yzma, to be honest. Yeah, well, dude, those two play off each other so Yzma well. is yeah. obviously, like, more sinister than Kronk, but she contributes to the comedy as well. Well, yeah. Well, her well, her and Patrick Warburton, like, we Eartha Kitt. Lover. 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 <laughs> Why do we even have that deliver in the first place? <laughs> <coughs> All right. So let's see I which one. Box and box and I'll, it I'll smash it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Here we go. This episode brought to you by Rocket Money, the personal finance app that helps lower your bills. Also brought to you by Chime, Chime. the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Hey folks, we're starting YouTube memberships. If you want access to emojis, oh. polls, behind the scene videos, and other perks, check out and see if you want to become a member. More perks coming soon. Okay. Yes, Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I know. Even if you're not the biggest fan of Disney, everybody's a big fan of their villains. I can't be the only one to say some of the best villains in all of cinema come from Disney's animated library. Yes. They're evil, conniving, and at times, damn hilarious. <laughs> Hades. Yeah. yeah Hades. Oh, dude, James Woods as, as Hades, yes. James Woods is hilarious. I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was thinking the same thing when I saw him. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Now we've talked a lot about the evil as Disney villains, but not a ton about who the funniest ones are. Because it is the world of animation, you can combine both the attempts at trying to look and feel realistic with the attempts to be as cartoonish as <laughs> This makes for an unforgettable combo that leads to a lot of unforgettable baddies. But which ones are the funniest? Which ones do you look back on and can't help but smile and even kind of chuckle out loud thinking about their goofiest moments? There's a ton of them to look through, and I'm going to give my count today. A few restrictions, though. No Pixar movies, and also no properties bought later. Um, this is only the Disney Studios Anime Library because, well, they started this whole anime and film business, so I think it makes sense to give them a whole top 11 list. Why top enough. 11? Because <laughs> this is the top 11 funniest Disney animated villains. He didn't explain it <laughs> because he likes to go one step beyond. Basically, that's it. Number one. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Who's starting to Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Uh... Okay, before you go now, she's so low on the list because this isn't the most charming or sinister villains, it's the funniest. In my opinion, there are 10 other villains that make me laugh a lot harder than her, but she is still pretty damn hilarious. From Pat Carroll's wonderful voice work to her one of a kind design, Ursula is about as iconic a villain as you can get. She owns every moment of evil and every moment of hilarity. The way she goes back and forth between being that sassy aunt who breaks some of the rules and a full-on psychopath is seamless. Yes. Whether it's doing a natural laugh or an evil laugh, <laughs> a delightful smile or an insane smile, a shout for joy <laughs> or a shout for darkness, they're all hilariously extreme and extremely hilarious. Don't underestimate the importance of a body language. 
She enjoys every <laughs> diabolical say, I don't really she remember makes. very many moments with. where she was She funny. has so much fun trying to gain as much power as possible and, of course, sneaks in a ton of bitchy one-liners throughout all of it. The miserable, lonely, and depressed. Pathetic. <laughs> let's not forget when she transforms from Ariel's voice, too. <clears throat> These scenes of her getting her ass literally ripped off are so much fun and lead to some great reactions. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rare we see the traditional Disney princess design go this zany and this slapsticky, so it's pretty enjoyable to watch. Her enjoyment is our enjoyment, and it's pretty difficult not to laugh along. Dear sweet child, that's what I do. <laughs> Number 10. Jafar from Aladdin. Mm. This is another one you may think should be a little higher, but again, we are mainly going on laughs. With that said, not only does Jafar have some of the funniest moments in Aladdin, but granted, I think every character in this movie does, yeah. but he also has some great support. <laughs> Teaming him up with Iago was a brilliant move, as the contrast between Gilbert Gottfried's voice and Jonathan Freeman's voice offset each other perfectly. How may I be of service to you? Pop, you can just... <laughs> It's not like it's a smart one or a dumb one either. It's just two awful characters who are awful in slightly different ways. One uses his smooth voice and intimidating demeanor to his advantage. The other uses his small size and unique voice to get what he wants. And it is pretty fun when you see him kind of switch places when you'll see Iago try to act a little bit more smooth. Excellent work, Iago. Ah, go on. But really, on a scale of one to ten, that you... From what I understand, they were both in the same booth and they were just doing that just as improv, just <laughs> <laughs> and it just kept going and going and they used it. Yeah. Once again, when you let your actors improv, some magic can happen. Like Robin Williams and like we talked about that during the Aladdin review. Robin Williams' is improv, holy hell. And that's, that's why I think no they different. need to do more simultaneous voice acting instead of having them all do their stuff separately. Well, they actually are working on doing that now, especially now that they are doing, like, the uh, binaural audio, because uh, uh, they actually, like, attach microphones to, like, the tops of their heads here and, like, have, like, microphones, like, pointed at them down here, and it's capturing audio from multiple areas, and, like, they actually do, like, buy booth readings or try booth readings with big characters such as uh, from God of War. You know, God of War, they had, they had uh, like, Chris Judge and Sonny Suljic do basically all of their line readings together because they're together throughout the entire, like, the entire game. The only time yeah. that they didn't was when they had to call them back for rereads. <laughs> and which, you know, you have to schedule around it. But then, of course, in the third one... They had uh, they added in Danielle Viscuti because of Freya being around them all the time, so it's it's amazing how they're able to how they're able to do that. But and uh, and I I agree they need to do like more readings together. One of the most enjoyably crazy laughs ever. Yes. Jafar is also a step above Ursula because he too impersonates a different character and I just find this guy a little funnier. He is so over-the-top grotesque, but absolutely loves being that way. Hell, even kind of shows off being that way that he just cracks me up. And come on, you gotta love those dad jokes. Your time is up! Don't toy with me! Things are unraveling fast now. Get the point? I'm just getting warmed up! <laughs> Keep an eye out for my joke book, Evil Puns and Groaning Grumpies. Also, I don't know why, but his reaction after dealing with the Sultan here kills me. <laughs> Most people look at Iago spitting the cracker out, but I always look at him rolling his eyes. For some reason, that just makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> Your Majesty certainly has a way with dumb animals. In the first film of the Disney Renaissance that was considered a comedic adventure, it only makes sense that its villain should get a lot of good giggles. On a scale of 1 to 10, he's... Eh, well, no, he's 10, but it's a solid 10. That laugh, Jesus. <laughs> Number nine. 
Mad Madam Mim from the Soul ah! Stone. Oh! Yes! This is another one of those underrated she's characters, actually, and in a weird way, it's really not that hard yes. to see why. She doesn't get a ton of screen time, and in the grand <coughs> scheme of things, you could technically cut her out, but then you not only miss out on a visually inventive battle, but also some hilarious moments. Mim is like that bitchy next door neighbor who just happens to have the power of Satan. She can transform into anything, yet she spends most of her time playing solitaire. She makes rules up literally so she can break them as soon as she starts. She has these unstoppable powers that can take over the world, but a friggin' flu takes her out. She's just a great mix of contradictions. Her transformations also get a lot of big belly laughs. As both her and Merlin hold on to both their hair and favorite color with every creature they become, leading to a lot of funny and creative designs. And yeah, like I said, the slapstick here is a lot of fun. Yes. Josh, you wait, you're gonna pay. <laughs> when you think of an evil, funny witch and the evil, funny power she has, Mim is one of the first characters that comes to mind. I'm actually a little shocked they didn't give her more staples of a witch, like the pointy hat and broom. But maybe they thought it'd be too close to other famous witches that they had, which already kind of share a similar voice. I like her because she reminds me more of a uh, crone from like, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. Like, she has the fey quality to her with all her transformations and whimsy and stuff. Well, and I think that's what is a sep what separates her from... A hag, from, rather, is what I mean. A hag. I think that's what separates her from, like, other quote-unquote witches that you've come across in media because she's like she doesn't feel like she needs to be in that wheelhouse of like the stereotypical witch with the big pointy hat the black robe and all that she's not a witch because she's like getting power from like an alternative form. she's she was born that way she's yeah, literally like the fey magic yes exactly so it's and really it, cool and I, and I like that a lot more Oh, bless their little black hearts. Whatever the reason, she's a great selfish evildoer who's always in it for herself. And luckily, we're in it too for all the laughs she gives. Oh, ho, ho. I win! I win! <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> You're only number nine. Number the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, gosh. One of the fun things about this movie is almost anyone can technically be a villain. Every second somebody is trying to disrupt whatever Alice is doing or even try to cause her harm. Hell, all of Wonderland is literally chasing her by the end. But by far the literal queen of hilarious evil is the Queen of Hearts. She's basically a spoiled brat in a grown woman's body and if she ever doesn't get her way, you know what that means. Off with her head! Off with his head! Watching Alice as well as everybody try to navigate through her temper tantrums is some of the best comedy in an already very funny movie. I love you never know if she's gonna greet you with a smile or an axe. I think half the time even the queen doesn't know. The way she goes from an almost pleasant, even comforting demeanor. Now, um, where do you come from and where are you going? To a demonic she-demon just keeps you on your toes and ready to laugh at any <clears throat> mental breakdown she has. Never mind all that. Get to the part where I lose my temper. I particularly love when she goes cowardly. Once Alice becomes a giant watching her try to still have some authority but also Is that hide the behind. Same voice actor that voices the fairy godmother in Cinderella? I think it might be. Cause Disney was very good about using the right the right like the right people and getting the right hold on, let's take a look at that. Let's let's do a little bit of wiki wiki diving here. Let's see. Alice in Wonderland. Oh, that's fine. There it is. 1951 animated Disney film. Come on, dang it. There we go. Released by RKO Pictures. Da, da, da. Queen of Hearts. Verna Felton. Let's see. Ah! Nah. I didn't know it was gonna make yes! Sound, so. I thought so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, Nick? And it was one year after the other. Okay. 1950 and 1951. I thought, yeah, okay. Huh. Cool. Good on you. Oh, yeah. Trying to check on Yeah. It's just I'm so used to, like, <laughs> met, like, hitting you with the opposite one. Yeah. Oh, gosh. What is it, dude? I was just trying to remember what she looked like. She's like a fucking eldritch horror, but the American McGee's Red Queen. Oh, God. <laughs> you gotta bring that one up? 
Also, I didn't realize, wow, she was actually born in 1890. Wow. Damn. So, December 14th, yeah. 1966. Yeah, she passed away then. Uh, she was 76. Also, Catherine Beaumont. The fact that Catherine Beaumont is still alive. <laughs> Catherine Beaumont is still alive, who played Alice. She not only played Alice... But she also played Wendy in Peter Pan. Oh. And not only that, but for the Kingdom Hearts games, she has come back to voice Alice in every appearance. Oh, that's cool. And she's apparently Kyrie's grandma. Yes. Well, because Alice remember. doesn't because Alice doesn't appear in these games, they had to figure out a way to like I don't remember Kyrie's grandma having a voice. I don't even remember meeting her. <laughs> Apparently really in birth cool. sleep, though. Okay. Sorry about that. So, yeah, a little wiki Kyrie diving. Is even in birth by sleep? I don't know. I thought birth by sleep was the three, like... Caravan and Aqua. Yeah. Yeah. But, either way, though, a little bit of deep diving on Kate's, uh, on Kate's knowledge there. Know. And, and she was right. She <laughs> was right. Either tidy husband just slays <clears throat> me. Room 42, you know. And as for you... <laughs> and then when Alice shrinks, that look of absolute vengeful delight, like, oh, bitch, you're going down. <laughs> Just this one drawing mid-yell after the Cheshire Cat pretty much cements Alice's demise. You're a fat, pompous, bad-tempered old tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it? Watch it again. Tyrant. <laughs> oh, my God, that is amazing. This is a dumb, childish, and of course, mad character who knows how to get the biggest laugh out of every scene she's in. Nothing whatever! Nothing whatever! That's very important! <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. God. Captain Hook from Peter Pan. Oh, gosh. This is another one where the comedic support helps a great deal. Yes, me. Captain Hook is supposed to be intimidating, but in every version, he's supposed to be a little comical, too and is teaming up with both me and especially the crocodile yes. lead to some of the funniest animation in any Disney movie. Well, for me, the funniest villain exit <laughs> is one of him. It's him, he's like got his legs like split in the, in yeah. the croc's mouth, and then the croc like snaps his mouth shut, and then Hook goes like like careening and skips on the way, like, smack, ay, 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 ay. That kills me every time, especially considering he skips under the boat that Smee and the other pirates are rowing away, and he's like, Captain, Captain, after the Captain. <laughs> so good. I feel like when people hear the name Captain Hook, this is the first thing that comes to their mind. I'm not even saying he's the best one. I still have a soft spot for Tim Curry, but yes. he's the most recognizable in terms of how he looks and juggling both intensity and comedy. His banter with his bumbling sidekick gets a lot of great moments. Am I not a man of me word, Mr. Smee? <laughs> yes. Uh, always, uh, Captain. <laughs> and yes, even he shares some great slapstick. Well, Captain, it's nice to see you smiling again. God, that's cool. <laughs> but like I said, the best moments are with the crocodile. He is so afraid of this thing and so in pain while fighting him, you almost feel sorry for him. But that pity just makes the humor all the better, as his pain is just <laughs> there so <it> genuine. Is. <laughs> <laughs> me with hook that's it i'm a <laughs> goner with laughter watching these three together that's so good Slow down some of the slapstick to see how perfect the timing is. Bong. Even the sound design is perfect. I practically yeah. piss my pants whenever he makes that skipping sound across the water after he screams for help. It <laughs> <laughs> is very good. <laughs> murdered me as a kid. Literally. I think I died and was like resurrected somehow. 
So it's him being chased, being skipped across the water. The pirate's so scared, they're rowing, lifts them into the air. Hook traveling under the boat while they're in the air, and the croc following right after. <laughs> That's five layers of comedy in yes, just a few seconds. It's so good. Not to mention, you also get kind of a half performance with him as the father in the beginning, too. Which also leads to a lot of great comedy. <laughs> oh! Poor Nana. Poor Nana. His character is great, his comedic support is great, helping lead to, what else? Some great laughs. The cursed beat of bad. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. Oh, so good. Corella DeVille from Ooh. 101 Dalmatians. When people think of the stereotypical evil villainess with a cigarette holder and a fur coat, but with a humorous edge to her, Corella is always the first to come to people's minds. Absolutely nothing about her is subtle. Her design, yeah. the volume of her voice, even her evil plan is pretty damn intense. <laughs> I don't care how you kill the little beast, but do it! Poison them, drown them, bash them in the head. You got any chloroform? Good God, lady. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's fucking evil. She is. So great about her is that she never holds anything back. She does more than wear her emotions on her sleeve. She makes a fashion statement out of it. Yes. How are you? Miserable, darling, as usual. Perfectly wretched. Everything she does is big and crazy. Half of her extreme <laughs> reactions look like a giant mosquito who's out for more blood than the world has. I've talked about that sketchy Xerox style in the past and how sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't in Disney films. Honestly here, I'm half and half. Mm. I don't think it always works on the human characters, but man, does it work on Cruella. Every odd, out-of-place pencil line just makes her look even more unhinged. Yeah. Like, even her <laughs> line work can't keep up with how extreme she is. She's also one of the few Disney villains who's just as interesting in the straight-to-DVD sequel. Yep. Yeah. Uh, also, I would say Glenn Close's portrayal in the live-action one was also pretty damn good, too. Mm. Yeah. She was one of the best parts of that of that film. Mm -hmm. I mean, as much as I love the, the idea of the live action and, you know, Jeff Daniels uh, and uh, was it Miranda? I think it was Miranda, not Miranda, I think Miranda Richardson or, or Jolie Richardson. I can't remember which of the Richardsons it was portraying, uh, portraying like the wife, but God, it was so, it was so good in like, they actually did a good job on portraying the human characters in some ways better than the animated one. Mm-hmm. I confess, I actually really like the sequel to 101 Dalmatians, and a lot of that is because of Cruella's story. She has a complete mental breakdown and suddenly becomes obsessed with creating the perfect work of art that centers around what else dots. Now, that's already funny enough, but when she reveals the only way to create the perfect dot is it's to Jolie use the block. Jo it was Jolie, okay. So it was Jolie Richardson. Good to know. Blood of Dalmatians? Holy shit is that bonkers! But man, it's iconically funny as well. There's a reason she's still a hit Halloween costume all these years later. Uh -huh. Because people love to dress up as the fabulous, mental, and fashionably hilarious Queen of Insanity. Cruella, Cruella de Vil. I know this is difficult, but I just don't need you anymore. Close-up shot. Back then I thought I needed you, I really did, but... I just don't need to be subscribed to you. I mean, why did I feel like I had to subscribe to people that sound like the grown-ups from Peanuts? <laughs> oh, you would say that! You would say that! <laughs> <laughs> Who told me? Rocket Money told me. Rocket Money is a personal <clears throat> finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I'm glad you understand. No! I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Be mature. Okay, actually, you can be like that. That's okay. That's, oh, that's kind of cute. I like that. Uh, nope, that ruined it. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. I thought we could talk without using that language. Rocket Money has over 5 million users as it save its members and- That's really how you start a business, isn't it? Think of something that you hate fucking doing, and then offer to have people pay you to do it for them. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean... 
because like that's one thing I always hated every time like Books a Million or the music store would make me sign up for magazines I'd be like I'll do it because I know it helps you out to the person working there you know <clears throat> and I have to go call them and be like I want to cancel it no can we, well, we can just give it to you no I don't need it we no. can give it to you for 30% off no. I don't need it mm. It's just like, just let me cancel it. <clears throat> well, that's just like, and God forbid you forget, and you have to be like on the phone with your bank as well, being like, I forgot this. Can you please get me a refund? Well, you need to call them and cancel it. Let's get on the line with them. And I'm like, okay. Oh, we, we can. Let you, no, I don't want to keep it. For me, it, it's always the. It, it was always the Planet Fitness one that got me, because <clears throat> when uh, when I got kicked out of Planet Fitness. And they told me, you know, that, you know, I was, I basically, like, was not allowed to come out. I was like, okay, well, I need to cancel my subscription. They're like, well, there's a process to that, plus you're going to have to pay a cancellation fee. And I'm like, good luck. Good luck have, like, like getting me to pay no. that. Because I went to my No, bank. if I'm not allowed to be here, you're canceling my subscription <clears throat> immediately. Well, you don't get any more money from me. They wanted to make him pay, like, $75 yeah, or something. For yeah, can- they're, to they're, cancel it. So what I did was, scam artists. What I did was I went to the bank and I said, yeah... Uh, Planet Fitness apparently has had issues with their billing stuff, and they and they haven't stopped billing me. I need you to like block every billing attempt from Planet Fitness. You don't even have there. to make up an excuse to your bank for that. You can just be like, "Can you put a freeze on Planet Fitness for my account, please?" Well, basically, I well, basically, I told them me. that, and then you know, get, basically after that, I kept getting calls from Planet Fitness just being like, uh, "Well, it shows here that you owe us a seventy-five dollar cancellation fee." I'm like. I'm sorry, I don't recall ever having to be responsible for that. I'm, I'm sorry. Bye. Yeah, it was in the fine it. print of the contract you had when you got in. And I'm just like, I'm like, really? And it's like, you know what wasn't in the fine print of the contract? The part that said that you were going to fucking kick me out of the gym for something that wasn't even against your rules. Oh, well. Gym anyway. intimidation. <clears throat> gym isn't intimidation. That, isn't that said. what that guy said? Well, yeah. Said? Well, here's what happened. The guy was on the like leg lift machine. You know, the, you know, he basically like the calf raisers. You basically like put the thing on your shoulders and you raise up with your calves to like build your <clears> calf <throat> muscle. And the guy was on like a really low setting. He only had like three things going up. And me, I get on it and I feel I'm like, oh, all right, let me increase that. And I put it down basically almost all the way to the bottom because I got strong calves. I, I've always had strong legs and never really had any issue with it. But I remember I maxed out the machine and I I did my calf raisers and I got off the machine. I did like three sets of ten and everything was good. But then all of a sudden, tap, tap, tap. Oh, hey, what's up? I was like, yes, sir, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to ask you to leave. I was like, uh, what did I do? It's like, well, sir, we have a zero gym intimidation policy. And unfortunately, one of the patrons here felt felt intimidated by, you know, your looming and also the fact that you were showing them up on the machine. So we're we're just going to have to ask you to leave. And uh, it's like uh, like. So in other words, you're running a scam. <clears throat> basically, basically. You're going to kick out everyone you possibly can and charge them extra money, well, like on the grounds of like, oh, it's it's gym intimidation if you actually make any progress while you're working <coughs> out. But that's the thing. I wasn't looming over the guy. I was sitting at another machine and I was waiting for him to be done with the cat. It wasn't like I was like standing behind him and be like, when are you going to be done? They're probably Get told the machine, to kick bro. out a number of people for that reason per week. Like, get off the machine. They probably have a quota for that because every person they kick out like that, they can just keep taking money from without them but, like using the service any longer. They need to have someone take that business over and just be like, okay, no more gym intimidation, like, like bullshit. Like, if people get offended by you, like, being in the gym next to them and being bigger than they are or anything like that, that's on them. That's their insecurity. That's not on you. Now, if you're looming over somebody and you're just like, get off the machine, bro, I need to get my reps in. I can understand if you've done if that, that, then Now, yeah, if it's that, but I understand. But stuff, that's just stupid. Yeah. And I'm not a gym bro. Do I look like a gym bro? No, I was there to get my reps in. I was there to, like, try and make myself better. But no, Plant Fitness apparently doesn't like that. 
average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. <laughs> <clears throat> Take that thing that Damn. doesn't exist! Cancel your unwanted subscriptions <laughs> by going to rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia. That's rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia. <laughs> no, I will <laughs> say it again! Rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia! You know, now this is what happened if I just got chimed. <laughs> yes, we are <laughs> doing <laughs> our sponsorship! <laughs> because you can set yourself up for financial <laughs> success by starting to build your credit history today. Honestly, with I the like, Chime I've, Secure I've, I've Credit like Builder I've about, I like what I've heard about Rocket. But also, not only that, but also Chime, from what some people say, is actually okay. He's a credit card. You can I've heard some people be like, I love mine, and I've heard other people be like, payments. you absolutely should not use Plus! it. There's no annual fee or credit check to get started. Use it everywhere. Actually done enough credit research to find out what you do. Yeah, <coughs> me neither. I'm fine Using with your my credit union account. I'm fine with my first bank and trust. Money. You also get a checking account too. You can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit. Because with a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. You can get fee free overdraft with Spot Me. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with Spot Me when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a credit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. Access over 60,000 fee free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. Oh, I'm doing the wrong part now. Send and receive money, pay friends through Chime, Chime members or not, and cash out your money fee free. Build your credit this new year. Just open a Chime checking account with over $200 qualified direct deposit to get started. Go to Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. Say it again. Okay. You can do the mandatory disclosures. <laughs> no, that's not working. I'll do it. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is <laughs> 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 NA or Stripe Bank, NA members, FDIC. Oh, Out of network ATM withdrawal and over the counter advance fees may apply. Call 1 844 244 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Now I'm gonna go shave before people start asking, didn't he not have a beard earlier? He didn't. He just had a goatee. <laughs> Uh, this was Doug whenever he was uh, still recovering from shingles. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's why he's gone so long without posting like a like an, a new official uh, uh, nostalgia critic video. Which I'm glad he's over the shingles finally. Good job, Doug. <clears throat> Number five. Radigan from the Great Mouse. Oh, damn. It's rare you get a villain who's equally intelligent, charming, and funny as the lead in a Disney movie. But Radigan and Basil are perfectly matched. This is different than some of the other Disney villains where they had good comedic support. Here, Radigan's comedy mostly comes from his rivalry with the main protagonist. It's a battle of the egos, and both of them are equally comedic. I haven't had a moment's peace of mind. However, Radigan has an animation style that truly is something to behold. He's one of only two characters on this list, the other I'll get to later, who I simply can't separate the voice from the animation. Like, you can replace other Disney characters with other voices, and sure, they may not be as good, but you could still buy it okay. Vincent Price's <coughs> voice and his comedic timing are so ingrained with this design and movement, I can't fathom any other sound coming out of him. It really is what the phrase hand and glove was invented for. Let me show you how it works. What? Basil on the case! Both his large size and intimidating bruteness contrast <laughs> perfectly with his sophisticated daintiness. He's both a bloodthirsty monster, but also an elegant dancer who literally has a fountain of champagne. When he's bested, it's both so satisfying and hilarious to see, slithering from a quiet whisper to a thunderous roar. Though frankly, I expected you 15 minutes earlier. <laughs> you never know what's gonna come out of this guy, except that whatever it is, it's probably gonna get a laugh. What else can you say, but he's tops and that's that. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Still never actually seen that movie. That is, su it's such an underrated Disney movie. A lot of people say that the little, like, I know that they don't include it in, like, the Disney Renaissance because a lot of people go from The Little Mermaid to Aladdin. But The Great Mouse Detective is so good. I remember seeing it as a kid, and 
there was a part of it in the very beginning that terrified me as a kid. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, a long, long time ago. I don't really remember it. But I will I say I've this. It, the thing with Vincent Price as Radigan is perfect. Because Vincent Price, such an iconic voice. And also mm -hmm. it was one of the last roles he did before his untimely death. Which, you want to talk about someone who I wish I could bring back just to narrate my life? It'd be Vincent Price. Because the guy, his voice, oh, so good. So delicious. Yzma and Kronk. Hey. Hey. Alright, so I'll admit, this isn't a movie I really got that <coughs> into. I'm not the biggest David Spade guy, but I don't know, maybe I gotta see it again. However, I am really huge in Eartha Kid and Patrick Warburton, so naturally, I love these two. <laughs> Words can't describe the bizarre chemistry these two have. Both their animation and their voice acting get so many laughs whenever they're on screen. Yeah. Does he, a little to the left, <laughs> have any idea of who he's dealing with? It's no secret the movie doesn't keep that close to telling a straightforward dramatic story. In fact, half the time they just abandon logic for a joke. How did you get back here before us? Uh, uh, how did we, Kronk? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I, must have I mean, it's the it's the delivery that makes it work. Yeah. Because Patrick Warburton has such a good dry voice that he could say anything, and he would say it in such a way as just like you'd believe it. It's just like just like like, did you really do that? Yeah, yeah, I really did that. Do you not believe me? Here, let me show you. Teams do come from these two. It's another strange pairing of opposites with one being the brains and the other being the bronze, but the uniqueness of how these two talk and the unexpected tone Speech shifts in their humor speaking. always keep you guessing as to what they're gonna say or do next. The design on these two are also crazy memorable. They almost look like carvings on an ancient temple if one of them was withering away and the other was on steroids. They so don't go together that it naturally <clears throat> creates comedy without even having to try that hard. He's still alive! Well, it's not as dead as we would have hoped. He can't come back. Especially after that lovely eulogy. These two are just so naturally hilarious. It's hard to even explain. They just have the most unique, yet familiar, bombastic, yet pathetic, strong, yet also weak relationship a comedy duo should have. <laughs> More and more, the internet makes Wait. memes out of them, and for good reason, mm -hmm. they just produce so many laughs no matter where you place them. Well, almost where you place them. Oh. The movie as a whole may not be my thing, but even I know what a phenomenal comic duo these two have always been. I want to watch him personally do again. <clears throat> Prince John from uh, Rock, the Prissy Prince of Nottingham, brings all his glamorousness. I love this movie as a kid, but this is one I have never revisited since I was a kid. I want my mommy. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that scene. Thumb sucky. Yes. And maybe just a few innuendos? I've got a dirty thumb. Okay, maybe a lot of innuendos, but even outside of that, this character is diehard, laugh out loud amazing. Like some of the villains on this list, he's pompous, egotistical, whiny as hell, incredibly vain. But, unlike those other villains, he's teamed up with a snake. Which, yes, just makes the innuendos uh, even funnier. Be gone, long one. To hell with Beauty and the Beast or Aladdin and Jasmine, these two are Disney's power couple! Oh, for God's sake, They work Doug. so well off each other and practically breathe humor. I was, oh, wait, no, Kaz from uh, The Jungle Book. I... Sniss, I think was his name? Just about everything they do is funny. It always sounds like their voice actors are just having a ball, going over the top, but in a way that's still believable to what the characters are. John the Worst! It's marvelous, merciful. You got it all wrong. The sniveling, groveling, weasel. Get out. Every moment with them is like watching couples counseling go incredibly wrong, but <laughs> incredibly right at the same time. <laughs> you know in some respects they shouldn't be together, but you know in many other respects nobody else would be able to stand them. So it's like an alliance of convenience. Mm -hmm. Please don't do that. Mm -hmm. You have a very loud thumb. I think it's pretty straightforward why these two are so great. Well, maybe not straightforward. Come on, you knew I had to make that joke. And if you disagree, just think of the funniest couple you can having an argument. And tell me these two aren't at least just as funny. 
Get out of that if you can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Top two. two. Who do we got? Guest on from the Hey, Beast. okay. It's a villain that's both so simple yet hilarious at the same time. Gaston is the <coughs> egocentric, good-looking hunter who's a favorite of the entire town except for Belle. For the man who has everything, he wants, well, everything, including Belle's hand in marriage. We'll have six or seven. Dogs? No, Belle. Strapping boys like me. Seeing his transformation from comedic foil to an absolute monster happens so naturally, yet you realize it's not even a transformation. We just find out more about it. In that first half, though, he's both so intimidating, but so pathetic at the same time. You have to laugh while watching him. It's fun seeing someone people admire for being so confident become so desperate and dumb and trying to get what he wants. He needs all the help he can get! <laughs> don't talk about my father that way. Yeah, don't talk about her father that way. <laughs> he's a guy everybody has seen somewhere in their lives. Maybe you don't know him personally, or maybe you do, but you recognize a lot of this character in other people. Once again, he's given great support with his sidekick, LeFou. The small doofus who often gets things wrong, but loves being in the presence of greatness. Even if he's often punished for it. So, how'd it go? Gaston is so egocentric, even his villain song is named after him. Yeah, not be prepared or hellfire or singing about things that are important to the villain, because to this villain, he is the most important thing to him. I use antlers in all of my decorating. Even when it goes full <laughs> evil, there's still some funny moments with him. Like his taunts <clears throat> are just so mean, I always have to chuckle at them. What's the matter, beast? <laughs> Too kind and gentle to fight back. And when he's finally bested, it's so great seeing him turn into a complete quivering coward. Let me go! Please! Don't hurt me! The voice acting is great, his design is unassuming, his writing flows very organically, and he's a laughably dumb clod all the way through. No one's as great as Gaston, <laughs> except maybe one. I think we all know who it's going to be. We mentioned him earlier. At least I hope it is, because... Uh, are you talking about Hades? Yes. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, it's Hades. I, I hope so, because if Doug left him off the list, I'm just going to be... I'm just going to be flabbergasted. And the number one funniest Disney animated film... Come on, you know it's Hades. Yes! yes! Like, oh, <laughs> God, you hurt my ears. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. Holy shit. I like the skip from like the tension that just oh come on you know yeah <laughs> I'm sorry Kate here let me turn myself down a little bit more holy sh I didn't mean to yell like that are you all right yeah. I'm okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry oh uh, so yeah Hades is definitely he's the funniest Disney you might villain ever give, like a earphone warning before i probably should <laughs> that was really wild i'm sorry it's okay. oh, i know it just skipped ahead to see if your guess was correct and it was hades is a comedic miracle <coughs> of animation yeah so as a lot of you are probably aware i wasn't like the biggest fan of this movie which also led to some comedic avenues <laughs> <laughs> yes so this is the thing a lot of people uh, like would assume that like, that Oni plays Oni plays made fun of Doug because Doug is just like I don't get it I don't get it I don't get why they why why is this like lust like why is this uh, like uh, why is this like using gospel and chorus and then, and then Oni was just like because it's a musical and because it's it's meant to look like Vegas they're, that's what they're inspiring from the that's the inspiration for the artwork, dude. Come on. But yeah. It's, it looks like Vegas. Why does it look like Vegas? How is that funny? I don't get it. <laughs> look. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. Doug Doug has taken that in stride. And every time he hears them yell in that way as him, Doug laughs his ass off because he's just like, he, he gets it. He's just like, yeah, I kind of do sound like that. <laughs> Although Doug doesn't scream like that anymore. I'm sorry, anything that has me look like Slugworth from Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka is gonna make me laugh. <laughs> anyway, I didn't hate the movie. 
Honestly, when the film came out, it didn't get a warm reception from critics and audiences, so it is interesting seeing it get more and more of a following. With that said, everyone across the board said James Woods' Hades was about as perfect a comedic performance as you could get. Yes. So is this an audience or a mosaic? Our things in the underworld. Well, they're just fine. You know, a little dark, a little gloomy, and as always, hey, full of dead people. What are you going to do? The story is he was in a silly mood, and he voiced the character like his agent, and they reworked the film around that. Also, he used a lot of mannerisms of a used car salesman. That's also what he what he stated as his biggest inspiration for like a lot of the lines because he's trying to upsell you on on himself. He's just like, he's like come on, come on. I mean, seriously, look, look, look at this. Look, look, look. Yeah. Funny enough, the video game Hades, no relation, like actually went complete opposite and Hades is like the most serious character in it and everyone else is fucking hilarious. Yeah, unfortunately that's one thing about the Kingdom Hearts games that they definitely... They didn't quite get his comedic factor in those. <clears throat> no, and I think it's because of the fact that they... Once again, it's a Japanese company making a game based on Disney properties and the American actors are having to work with what the Japanese, like, game developers did. Mm -hmm. And comedy is different across all spectrums. I guarantee if they had, like, uh, like an American, like, writer or, you know, like a writer who is familiar with the Hercules, like, universe and everything, he could come up with some stuff that could uh, get, that would probably get a laugh out of, like, Hades' performance in Game of Hearts. At least that's what I think. Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. And okay, I'll just say it. I get the feeling that if James Woods was not Hades in this, I don't think people would like this film as much as they did. No. Other movies like Peter Pan or Beauty and the Beast or Great Mouse Detective, if you replace the villain or even take him out, there's still other great things about him. There's still these masterworks. I could be wrong, but... I would also say Danny DeVito. Yeah, I Danny was about DeVito to say, yeah. I was like, you gotta admit, Danny DeVito helps too, though. Will you forget the head slicing thing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, hey, beautiful. He's like, uh, oh, what? He's like, hey, beautiful. I'm for real, too. <laughs> Just dumps him in the water. Uh, I think people would with like the water Hercules. Man, with the no, with Meg. Oh, Meg. Oh, He's man. like, is, is Wonder Boy over there for real? It's like, mm -hmm. hey, honey. I'm for real too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just oh, dumps him in the water. He comes up next to uh, Pegasus, and Pegasus is just like, <laughs> and he's like, it's <laughs> like, so he's fine, but love it because of Hades. Again, maybe I'm wrong, but take him oh. out of the equation and really think about if you would keep returning to this movie. I honestly think he means that much to it. This is a he performance a that amount. makes every line funny, especially. Yeah, again, I'll just say it. With a script that doesn't have that many funny lines for him. Th th not that they're all bad, they're clearly not. There are some good one-liners, but written, I don't think a lot of them would get that big a laugh. Like when he says the line, we dance, we kiss, we schmooze, we carry on, we go home happy. What do you say? Come on. It's not really that funny a line, but when he says it, we dance, we kiss, we schmooze, we carry on, we go home happy. What do you say? Come on. God damn, is that hilarious? <laughs> yeah, it's the delivery. Once again, the delivery is everything. And also, his uh, his delivery of like when Pain and Panic, he's like uh, he's like destroying the vases that has Hercules' face on it, and he's just like, "What are those?" It's the shoes. Yeah, he's just yeah. like he's like, "Oh, is, is it yeah, this this?" I am trying to work a plan, and the one thing that can undo it all, and you are wearing his merchandise! <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just hear, you just the hear straw panic, and... you hear panic drinking through the straw. <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, one second to drink. <laughs> ah! Boom. <laughs> so good. Oh. This is the other character on this list, aside from Radigan, that I cannot separate. At all. Yeah. Nobody could replace this voice. I agree. Oh, that's so nice. Aye, verse. Aye. And funny enough, nobody has. 
Woods actually loves doing this voice so much that he said he would always return to voice it. That is a huge undertaking for such a popular character, but man, I think I speak for everyone when I say we're all thankful he does. Yes. People are, are gonna get hurt, aren't they? Nah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a possibility. It happens, you know, it's war, but what can I tell you? Anyway. It's almost <laughs> scary how funny he makes these lines, which is not to say he can't also be intimidating when he needs to be. When a scene has to be serious, he can play it serious, but he does so in a way that never feels forced or out of character. Gerald Scarfay's design also allows the animation to be as vibrantly moody as the scene demands, with his fiery hair changing color depending on his emotions, making his reactions all the more humorous. The one schmeal who can last it up is waltzing around in the world! The speed, the charm, that distinct articulation, it is one of the most comfortable, ingrained, naturally funny performances, not just in a Disney film, but in any animated film, period. I'm not gonna pretend like every line is a laugh riot or anything, but every line has a spark of comedic joy that's impossible not to at least giggle or smile at. I know! You know, I know, I got it. I got the concept. The way the manic animation matches his <laughs> mood swings, the way Woods performs the mood swings, and the way they meld together to absolute perfection, I really think is an amazing feat of comedy. He's the most hilarious kind of evil <laughs> Disney has to offer, and in such an amazing lineup, it probably goes without pointing out, that's really saying something. Whoa, Whoa was my hair up? <laughs> Do you think these are the funniest Disney villains? Do you think I was way off? Do you agree with the order, or did I get them backwards? Let me know what Disney baddies you think should be on the list, and we'll see what other great comedic foes Disney will make in the future. Which is already not off to a great start. Oh. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. I still would have given the hyenas an honorable mention if it were me. I agree. I agree. I think. I think. <laughs> uh, shut up, Ed. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lee and Megan have a dog that looks like Ed. <laughs> His name is Tux. <laughs> I thought that was their cat's name. No, that's my no, mom's that, cat. That's her. Is that yeah. Oh, their like, cat's Nix. Yeah. Nix and Binks. Nix, Binks. And then they have Tux, Tux. Um, Peaches, and Bella. Peaches, Peaches, Peaches. Yeah, I sing that peaches, song. Peaches, 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 Peaches. Oh God. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> That was that was Doug Walker with the uh, top eleven funniest Disney villains, and I gotta admit, damn good list. Yeah. Damn good list. I was very happy so, that Hades was number one. Number one. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Also, I love that movie. Oh, that's same. one of my favorite like movies as a kid, and now I watch it quite frequently. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that movie when I was a kid. When I get. Like, <clears throat> after we watch a scary thing, I watch that. Or something else Disney related, but. I'll that's that that's her the therapy. Yeah. I think the next time I'm playing something, I don't have to pay full attention to. I'm going to throw Emperor's New Year all in the background because I haven't seen it in a long time. I love that movie. I've watched that one. I watched that one too. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Sorry. sorry. And then <laughs> when. um. Pacha comes up and he's just like, um, can you hand me the slipper? And then he's like, oh, sure. And then he's like, whoa, wait a minute. Why are you up there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh. And then uh. the cr when Kronk's like got Cusco in the bag and he does his like, like secret spy, like, um, uh, Oh, singing, yeah. and he's like, and then he's like, uh, like yeah, freezes on freezing. the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. Was for Cusco. Was made specifically to kill Cusco. Oh, yeah, Cusco's poison. <laughs> oh, listen to Asher down there. He's dreaming. Look at him. Mamash. <laughs> he's okay. I'm gonna have to like. Hide my pins 
to keep him from eating them. Well, it's not just him. It's the cats, too, apparently. That, yeah, that's true. I guess just make it to where they can't knock them into the floor. I need to throw you some money to get on Amazon and order us a bottle of the spray for cables that makes cables better. Ah, that actually would work pretty well. On all the cables in the house, at least upstairs. Maybe even downstairs, too, just in case. Yeah. Because he did sneak into my room earlier. I don't know how. Like, I literally came out of the bathroom and I heard, Pew! Pew! And I was like, How the fuck did you get in there? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, whenever I let them out earlier today, he ran right into your room. I'm like, No, you don't. I ran in right after him and I picked him up. He apparently ninja in there when I came out at some point. He's eh, fast. He is. He's super fast. Deceptively like... fast. He needs a bath. They all need baths. Ah, fair enough. Anyway, we need to end this video. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, everybody, thank y'all very much for tuning in. This was the Top 11 Funniest Disney Villains by the Nostalgia Critic over on Channel Awesome. If you want to check out more from them, feel free to, uh, you know, click their name in the title of the video. And, uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Take care, everyone. Peace.